Hi, Chris Brumlow here again. I'm a partner at Brumlow & Company, Certified Public Accountants. We're a proactive next generation firm focused on individuals and small business owners and proactively looking at their tax situation now and in the future. Started over 30 years ago by my father. Today it's run by myself and my cousin, Hugh Bishop, CPA. He's the managing CPA partner. And along with the rest of the staff and CPAs, we continue the tradition of helping those people prepare and maximize their tax situation. Check us out, bac.cpa. And if you need a CPA, get a hold of us. Love to talk to you. You know, I want to talk quickly today just about the myriad of forms. If you ever spend time around a CPA firm, and I do, um, we speak in uh, forms. We speak in terms of the 1040, the 4652, the you know the 1160. All of those things actually mean something. But I thought it'd be really useful to kind of break that down into to generally the forms you might come across. So in your personal return, federal tax return, we're talking the IRS, it all starts with a 1040. If you have an EZ or an ES, that's that's a different situation. But the 1040 is is for someone that's earning over fifty thousand dollars. You know the uh, the next thing that you'll see is deductions. So what do you get to uh, deduct uh, as itemized deductions if you're beyond the standard deduction limit? You'll hear a Schedule A. Uh, if you've had casualty losses, that's a 4684. If you have investment interest expense, that's a 49.52. Non-cash contributions, an 82.83. Uh, qualified business deductions, that's an 89.95. If you have uh, a business interest, then you need to, uh, and it's not a corporation, not a, a S corp or a C corp, you need to file that on a Schedule C. So if you're driving for Lyft or Uber, or you have a side gig, Schedule C. Um, to pay for the self-employment tax, again, if you're subject to that, you need a Schedule SE. How about depreciation? Well, that's a 4652. <laughs> Prior depreciation catch up. Well, that's a 3115. How about a home office? Do you have one of those? Well, that's an 8829. Let's look at tax credits. How about child care? Uh, if you have child care, you need a 2441. Education credits. Well, that's an 8863. You got retirement savings. Well, you need an 8880. You got energy credits for residential. That's a 5695. How about the earned income credit? That's form EIC or 8867. How about child tax credit? Well, you need a form 8867 or an 8812. You got foreign income. Well, that's a <clears throat> that's a tax credit that's done on 1116. How about uh, capital gains and capital losses? Well, if you've got stock sales, they're reported um, on Schedule D. If you have capital gains, again, Schedule D. Same thing for capital losses. If you've got uh, carryover of capital losses, that's page two of the Schedule D. If you sell, have sales of business property, well, you're going to need a 4797. How about an installment sale? Well, that's a 62.52. Like kind exchange, an 88.24. All right. What about if you've got pension items? Well, if you've got a Roth IRA or a, a IRA contribution, that's a that's another form. You've got to if it's non-deductible, it has to go on 88.06. If you've got premature distributions, that's a 50 53.29. What about other incomes? Well, interest and dividend income is is reported on Schedule B. Rental property, Schedule E. Um, if you've got an S Corp, you've got to uh, create a K-1. If you've got passive loss limitations, so you're subject, subject to those, that's Form 88, I'm sorry, 8582. If you have uh, report your tax shelter number on an 8271. If you've got to do a substitute W-2, that's a 4852. How about foreign earned income? Well, that has to be done on 2555. The health savings account, if you've got one of those, you got to report that on an 8889. And if you've got moving expenses and you're in the military, well, that's Form 3903. You know, if you're uh, putting an installment agreement together for tax owed, you need a 9465. If you're transmitting information to the IRS, that's an 8453. If you're doing an extension, that's a 4868. 
What if you've estimated doing estimated tax payment? Well, you got to do the 1040 ES. And how about an underpayment penalty? That's a 2210. The point of all that is there's a lot uh, of forms and a lot of complications that can go into you, your particular situation. But that's okay. We know it. We understand it. We live it. So if you have a situation that is complicated and complex, we love that stuff. So uh, reach out to us. Uh, again, I'm Chris Brumlow with Brumlow & Company Certified Public Accountants. Take care. Bye-bye.